Next up in my weapon videos is going to be Haley's weapon. Haley's weapon is obtainable through the recharge events alongside the archery contest. You can obtain the chest through her through the weapon depot event that goes alongside it. You'll be able to get a maximum of 100 fragments, so a full copy of the weapon every single time that is up. So it will take you 10 months of 1000 BD recharges to actually get this to four star. And Haley herself is in a bit of an awkward position in the meta of the game as a commander. So her synergy is, of course, with female, since she procs off active skills. But female is much better suited to run cavalry because of Layla and Salma, and even further down the line with Sanala as well. They're also more suited to running spears than imps because of Salma's. Uh, passive stats, she has cav and spear attack, but no infantry attack at all. So if you're trying to run infantry, it just makes a lot more sense to run bleed or even weakness. So actually finding a place for making Haley's awakening ability good is actually quite difficult just as a general concept. And the focus of this video is going to be, are you ever going to be able to push her and her ability to being that usable or is her weapon just going to be designated to being a base attack source and being thrown onto other commanders so here i have my spreadsheet going over all the details of her as a commander and her awakening ability so you see up here her stats she has 66 percent infantry attack 18 percent inf health and 18 percent inf defense so she's quite low statted but she does have infantry attack which is the most ideal stat you're after her awakening ability, every time she uses her own active army skill, this doesn't proc from all five commanders, it's only hers. There is a 40% chance to proc a shield on allied infantry, which will absorb damage once, so that it can absorb the first source of damage that's applied onto that lineup. The shield will be applied on all five infantry lineups, and you can absorb a normal attack, you can absorb a commander active it will just reduce the damage of whatever's taken next to zero. So then when you look at her weapon, this shield effect doesn't actually change at any point throughout the entire progression of the weapon, which is very surprising to me since that is the actual core awakening skill she actually has. So at every single stage, even at four stars, it's the exact same shield mechanic as it is at her just base awakening. The only thing the weapon is going to provide is a stacking health buff that can also proc on all infantry lineups when her shield procs as well. So I've looked through reports and th these health buffs do proc off the 40% chance as well. It's not guaranteed every time an active skill is cast. So that immediately reduces the value of this. And they're very low numbers as well. And we'll get into the specifics of exactly what you'll be getting from those health numbers as this video goes on but first of all her shield effect so as i've said this is the same for every stage of her weapon it doesn't matter if it's a base or if it is at four stars the one thing that will be a variable to it is of course the amount of actives being cast so the variable here will actually be layla and what stage of your layla at more so than Haley herself i have really messed the formatting up here let's fix that so at the top here, you have the variable of what stage the Layla is at. And then below that, you have the amount of Haley procs you should get on average throughout a fight. And then below that, we have the amount of instances of damage that those shields are actually going to negate throughout the fight. So since every trigger applies to all five lineups, this number below will just be the amount of procs multiplied by five. So negating somewhere between potentially 12 to 15 normal attacks on your front line is quite significant. That's like three to four seconds of potential damage negated. There are just so many variables that can reduce the effectiveness of this, however. Like if they're running triple weakness, the shields could get procced by a smaller instance of damage. And it's very hard to predict the amount of value you're going to be getting from those shields. But just as a rough approximation, I'd say it's somewhere like 
few seconds of incoming damage will be negated, which when you take into account stuff like commander actives and dragon attacks and stuff like that, is probably somewhere in the region of like 3% damage reduction across a fight, which is okay. But again, you're not getting any benefit from Haley's weapon on these shields at all. The only thing you're getting benefit from from Haley's weapon is these health increases. So here, again, Layla and her weapon will be a huge variable here, because of course it procs off this per active skill 40% chance, so the more active castings you have, the more you can proc the health increase. Here are the overall values of what you'll get throughout the fight, but the more relevant chart will be this, which accounts for uptime. So assuming you're running a full female composition and you have Selma proccing the active at one second, these will be what you can effectively envision as the health value throughout the entire fight that you'll be provided from the health increases part of the weapon. And you can see the numbers are very, very low. So it's a number that scales between 6 and 24% infantry health. Capping out at 24% infantry health with 4-star Layla weapon and 4-star Haley weapon is horrendous, honestly. It will take her health value here to 42% infantry health. That's not even better than Chris's base stats. The damage reduction you'll get from the shields probably puts her at approximate values of that. But again, that's with 4-star Haley weapon and 4-star Layla weapon, which isn't realistic for most people at all. If you have both of them, you're not going to ever be running Haley anyway, because you just have so much more premium options available to you. So for most people values you're going to be getting from this are probably somewhere in, in this region of between 6 and 12% infantry health. And honestly, considering this is all you're getting from the weapon, because again, the shields are not affected at all, I think Haley's weapon is maybe the worst weapon in the game. I haven't researched or like thought about this to any great extent, but if all your weapon is providing on the awakening effect is like 6 to 12% health throughout the fight, I'm not entirely sure what would be worse than that. I guess you can have stuff like Sauron weapon and stuff like that, but in terms of PvP weapons that you're equipping to PvP commanders, this is awful. So, as an overall conclusion to this, I would say you can of course run the weapon on Haley and use Haley if you're a real low to mid spender. If you're running, say, like a female infantry weakness hybrid, Haley can actually be decent in those situations for infantry, even though it's a very unideal build in terms of how she tests, it is quite decent in those situations compared to other options. You can use her weapon on her because it's just bonus stuff, but there's no point ever where running Haley with weapon is ever going to be a competitive pick. Her peak value is so low compared to pretty much all alternatives, even when you're considering maximum synergy on her. And to go back to the previous point I made in this video, she is probably just doomed to be a base attack source for the rest of time. Infantry players can, of course, just keep recharging and keep upgrading a weapon for the passive infantry attack on the weapon and then equip it on something else they want to use in their lead or weakness or whatever composition. Or maybe very, very long term, you'll just stick it on her for the 5k army size. But at this point in time, yeah, it's just really, really bad. One of the least effective weapons in the game, for sure.